Hello. In this presentation, I'm going to talk to you about the Harvard referencing style. But first, let us consider why we need to reference our essays. There are three reasons. The first reason is to avoid plagiarism. This is essential. However, it is possibly not the most important reason. The second reason is to show what reading you have done. If you do not reference, your essay cannot be awarded marks for your reading because it's not clear what reading you have actually done. The third reason is to make clear which ideas are your own and which ideas are from the sources that you have read. If you do not reference clearly, your essay cannot be awarded marks for your ideas because it is not clear which ideas are your own and which ideas you have taken from the sources that you have read. So, if you do not reference clearly, you cannot be awarded marks for your reading and you cannot be awarded marks for your own ideas. It is clear then that if you do not reference your essay clearly, you will most likely be awarded a very low mark. You must cite a source for everything that you borrow. Using another person's words and or ideas as if they were one's own or without acknowledging the source is known as plagiarism. Copying, when exact words are used without using quotation marks or without acknowledging that it is in fact a quotation, is the most serious form of plagiarism. In an academic paper, it is essential to avoid plagiarism. To avoid plagiarism, the writer must provide a note for any idea borrowed from another writer. Place directly quoted material in quotation marks and provide a bibliography at the end of the paper for every source. There are two types of quotation, direct and indirect. Direct quotation uses the exact same words as in the original source. Direct quotes must be placed between inverted commas. Indirect quotations include paraphrases, summaries and syntheses. In an academic paper it is quite acceptable to use other people's words and ideas. It demonstrates to the reader that you have read about your topic and that you have considered the views of others. You should be careful however not to include too much direct quotation. It is not acceptable to pad your paper. It is usually a good idea to restrict direct quotations to not more than 10% of the whole paper. You must make it clear when you are using somebody else's actual words. Direct quotation involves quoting a writer's exact words and should be marked by the use of quotation marks. For example, Mills, 1995, page 16, observes that, in spite of all that computers have to offer, human intervention is still necessary, notably in machine translation and lemmatization. When you use somebody else's words and ideas, but not exactly as they are written, this is known as indirect quotation or paraphrase. For example, Mills, 1995, page 16, observes that human intervention is still needed, in particular in the fields of machine translation and lemmatization, although computers contribute much. Citation within the text of a document refers the reader to an alphabetical bibliography or reference list at the end of the article. The surname of the author and the date of publication are inserted at the appropriate point in the text. 
If the name of the author appears in the text, cite only the year of publication in brackets. For example, regarding the reciprocal relationship between learner autonomy and concordances, Mills, 1994, pinpoints three areas of consideration, etc. The rest of this paragraph is a summary reporting the ideas from Mills, 1994. There are many reporting verbs that are used for citing sources. Here are a few examples. If the name of the author does not appear as part of the text, place the surname of the author and the year of publication with a comma separating the two as we see at the end of this summary paragraph. Within a paragraph, you do not need to repeat the references to an author's work, as long as it cannot be confused with other work cited in the article, or confused with your own comments and ideas. A synthesis involves combining the ideas from two or more sources, in this example, the author's names form part of the text and the dates of publication only are placed between brackets. Meanwhile, Mills, 1999, and Deacon, 2006, provide useful insights about debates and disputes in the Cornish language movement, but their accounts lack ethnographic detail. In this example, the author's names do not appear as part of the text, and so the author's names, the year of publication with a comma separating the two, appear together in brackets at the end of this synthesis. When a work has two or three authors, always use the surnames of all authors in all citations. When a work has more than three authors, Use only the surname of the first author, followed by et al. When a work has no author, cite the first two or three words of the bibliographic entry, followed by the year. The first entry is usually the title. Put the title of a periodical or book in italics, and use double quotation marks around the title of an article or chapter. N.D. is used when the date of publication is not found in the publication details of the source. Similarly, N.P. is used when the place of publication is not found in the publication details of the source. N.Pub. is used if the name of the publisher is not found. Ed. and Eds. are abbreviations for editor and editors. Et al. is Latin. Al is an abbreviation for Latin alia, which means others. So et al. means and others. Note that since al. is an abbreviation, it requires a full stop. Et is not an abbreviation, so it is not followed by a full stop. MS and MSS are abbreviations for manuscript and manuscripts. Sic is another Latin word. It means thus. We use sic when there is some error in the source and we wish to indicate that it is thus in the source and not our own error. P and PP are abbreviations for page and pages. Vol and vols are abbreviations for volume and volumes. Include a reference list headed bibliography or references or works cited at the end of the paper that documents your sources and provides the necessary information to identify and retrieve each source. References must include only the sources that were used in the research and preparation of your paper. References should be listed in alphabetical order by author's surnames 
at the end of the paper in the bibliography or reference list.